This video is sponsored by Squarespace. The Fuji X-T5 fixes the one and only issue, my biggest issue that I had with the X-T4. So first I wanna thank Fuji for sending out the X-T5 for me to try out. I didn't get to shoot with the camera a lot, I'll just be straight up, but I was in New York for the X-H2 launch and I got to know that camera very, very well. The X-T5 pretty much shares the same exact sensor, BSI 40 megapixel sensor, and the exact same autofocusing system. So I'm very familiar with how this camera operates. So what I wanna do is I wanna talk about the usability of the camera and how it, how it felt shooting with both of them at the same time. X-T5 is you know touted as being you know a little bit smaller, lighter than the X-T4, but pretty much a carbon copy in terms of design, which is a good thing, because if it ain't broke, don't fix it. This is a very, just an iconic design that gives you a different different experience than the X-H2 would or the X-H2S, right? The newer ones. Shooting it in the real world, I can't say that I noticed the extra or the 50 grams lighter body. It pretty much felt the same to me. And that's just the truth. But when you hold them side by side, like body for body, it is a small, it is a little lighter, but it's nothing that you actually notice in the real world. I'm gonna tell you one thing. My only real complaint as a photographer first is that if the X-T5 is mainly a photography camera, it's aimed more at photographers because of the tilt screen, arguably, I wish that they improved the EVF. So it's pretty much the same EVF as the X-T4 with slightly higher magnification. But to me, it looked the same. Now, if you've never shot another camera, you may not know what I'm talking about, but when you're using a camera with a larger EVF, it's almost like going to the movies and looking at the big screen compared to going to your grandma's house and looking at that little television from 1992, like 10 feet away across the living room. It makes a big difference because you can see the details in the image. You know, you can see the details like flaws or like a stray hair and you look into the EVF, you can see everything. And then for reviewing images, it's also great to be able to have a larger EVF. For example, the EVF that's in the X-H2S is a five, it's around a five million dot EVF and it is beautiful. It's a lot bigger. I wish that they were to put the same EVF that's in the X-H2 into the X-T5 and I think that that would have fit the whole kind of photographer first market. I, I just, I really wish, because when you're looking through here, I mean, it's still a good EVF, it's just, coming from my full frame and even the X-H2S, it's like, it's, it is it is kind of small. One of the things that I noticed is that because the camera body is slightly smaller, I feel like it's a little bit easier to hold, but I never felt that the X-T4 felt great in the hand, you know, because the grip is kind of small and it's like you're pressing it up with like your middle finger here, pressing it up like that. When you put a heavier lens on, it's not very comfortable. Um, I Kind of the same thing with the X-T5, maybe slightly more comfortable. Image quality. The X-T5, again, shares the same sensor as the X-H2. And with the X-H2, I shot a lot more, like I shot a lot of street photos and I shot in many different scenarios. Because in the studio, I'm not pushing these files. Not only are the files more detailed, obviously, but I did notice that there is a little bit more latitude in the files with the X-H2. So with that detail comes a little bit more flexibility in post where you get to push the colors a little bit, push the shadows even, you know, a little bit more. I noticed that and I was really happy with the output coming from someone that shoots mostly full frame. In regards to the 26 megapixel on the X-T4, gotta remember that sensor technology in general has not changed, has not really advanced that much over the years. I can take a camera from eight years ago and still almost get the same exact quality as one of these cameras. You know, at the end of the day, final product, I think that, you know, if you don't need the 40 megapixels, stick, stick with the 26. But if you need more, out of your sensor, out of your images, and you like to push your files, this is 100% gonna be an upgrade that you're gonna wanna do. Another thing that you get with the X-T5 that you do get with the X-H2, the X-H2S, that you don't get with the X-T4 is the new nostalgic negative film simulation, which that is quickly becoming my favorite film simulation. I'm a huge fan of film simulations. When I shoot Fuji, I pretty much shoot always with film simulations, and I love nostalgic neg. I love what it does to the skin tones. Huge fan. So that's that's another thing to keep in mind. So what about the autofocus? This is the big one. 
This is the one I was talking about at the beginning of the video. The reason why I don't shoot with the X-T4 much is because the way I shoot, I shoot in continuous autofocus for the most part. When I, especially when I shoot my Sony and Canons, I could stay in continuous. It's gonna just track the eye and I can move around back and forth and it's just gonna be in focus. And if the model moves a little bit, it's gonna, again, it's gonna just track them, make sure that they're in focus. When I would shoot with the X-T4, I'd have to switch to single because when I'm shooting continuous, Regardless of the lens, it's gonna just, it's gonna pulse every now and then. It's gonna pulse and it's gonna hunt. Especially with the 56 1.2, it would hunt all the time. So I'd have to switch to single. And it even happened with the 18 to 55 that I was shooting Diana with. And that might be perfectly okay for you. With the X-T5, your hit rate is gonna be so much better when shooting in continuous autofocus. It kind of reminds me when I shoot with my Sony and Canons. I mean, it's always locked on. And even in low light, it wasn't hunting. It wasn't looking for what where the eye you know like with the xt4 again in some of those scenarios it would still look it would still hunt and the xt5 is better in almost every single way i also want to be very clear that the xt5 autofocus isn't perfect and can be deceiving at times for example the camera would put an autofocus box over her left eye but then when i would review the image the camera actually focused on her right eye hopefully this can be addressed in a future firmware what about for video well, the X-T5 can shoot up to 6K 30p video, 4K HQ video that is down sampled from 6K and comparing it to the X-T4 at 4K 30, I find it to be a much sharper image. The X-T5 can also shoot 4K 60p without a crop, unlike the X-T4 that uses a small crop. You also get access to F-Log 2, which unlocks about 14 stops of dynamic range. And again, a little bit of advantage on IBIS, which I haven't tested myself with that little spec bump you lose out on the flip screen and i mean i can argue that a videographer behind the camera doesn't really need a flip screen as long as it tilts but someone that likes to film themselves or just likes the versatility i still think that the xt4 is probably the better option for you or the xh2 that has a flippy screen but it's also more photography focused see the thing is with the xt5 that this is giving you a unique experience that no other camera is giving you with the dials, you know? So you can make it a hybrid camera if you start attaching monitor, you know, if you attach a monitor to it, but with that, now it comes with charging batteries, locating an HDMI cord, putting it all together, making it a lot more bulky. It is a pain in the butt, and that's why flip screens are so invaluable to me. But for what this offers and the upgrades and the video, I think it's worth, I think a hybrid shooter can make it work. It's just a little bit more inconvenient. Now, I do want to talk about my biggest complaint with Fuji, Fuji cameras in video. This is their flagship, and this is a very capable camera. I love the ergonomics of the X-H2S and the X-H2. I know it doesn't have the dials, but there's something about the ergos, the, the ergos that I love and the way it fits in a hand. It's a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful camera. Thing is that Fuji still doesn't have touch tracking, and you don't understand how amazing it is until you actually try it. All of the video filmed for this video was filmed on the A7S III with, with a 100 millimeter macro lens using touch tracking. That's already extremely hard for the camera to do, but it'd be even harder to do it manual focus. And I'm able to just touch where I want the camera to, to track and it, it, it'll do a great job tracking. I hope Fuji can implement touch tracking in the future in their cameras. I feel like the autofocus is pretty good already, but I mean, touch tracking is just... Mm. Wrapping up my first impressions, on the X-T5. There are some things that I wish it did have, but at the end of the day, this is a very important camera in the industry right now. Um, and I'm glad they didn't change the design. As me being someone that uses a lot of the newer cameras and the, the latest tech in cameras, um, I could tell you that these cameras are making photography so easy that it's starting to make the process a little bit more, a little bit less fun. And it's kind of sterilizing the, the the process, you know, and I'm glad that Fuji is, you know, keeping, you know, keeping the dials and keeping you more involved in the process while including some of the latest tech. So I think it's a good balance. And I think in the future, I think that everyone's going to kind of revert back, you know, like everyone's going to have their, their camera that they're going to use for work. That's their, they know they're going to get the shot. It's got all the newest AI autofocus. And, and then on the side, they're going to have a camera that they actually enjoy using that inspires them to go out and use it. Because I'll tell you, I mean, I'm a Sony and Canon shooter for the most part, my primary systems, and I don't get inspired 
to go out and shoot with them. It's the cameras like the X-Pro3 and X100V and, and the camera like, you know, the X-T5, X-T4 that makes me want to go out and shoot. So it's very important. And I think that I am going to be using it in the studio every now and then because I can rely on the autofocus. So now I want to send a shout out to my sponsor for this video and that is Squarespace. I've been using Squarespace for over five years now and I love how easy it is to use. You don't need any kind of graphic design experience to start a website and to even make changes because you can, if you ever get bored, which happens sometimes, you can check out all these different kinds of templates and all you gotta do is just a, a click of a button, you can change everything up without doing anything extra, it's crazy. And they also have 24 seven customer support if you have any questions along the way. I even have an online store with them that I make you know, revenue while I sleep, where I sell my Lightroom presets and my retouching tutorial. So if you use the coupon code Manny, you're gonna get 10% off your first purchase. Don't wait any longer, you know, just go check them out. <sighs> you know, down there, down there. Okay, that's all I got, peace.